this was weird. It talked way, way more about erections than I ever thought or expected. Hi, so the Asian readathon is now over. Well, it's been long over because it's kind of like the middle of June, but making videos is hard and it takes a while. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna run through my TBR list that I set up in a previous video and see how I did and share my thoughts on the books. So the first book I mentioned in my to be read list was Split by Amani Saeed. As you can tell from my previous video, like I'm biased. I know Amani, I love Amani. I showed her like the video I made and like the section where I just rant about how much I love her and then she just kind of like sent me this in return. I read it all the way through and it's beautiful. The poems are so vivid and raw and vulnerable and it's a real privilege to hear her stories and for her to share it with you. Like each poem really is a gift that she's given. There's such a power to what she writes. She's talking about the complexities of faith and feminism. She talks about her abusive relationships and she shares what it's like to try and find love for yourself, from yourself and from everything around you. It's really beautiful and it's so great. Love you, Amani. The second book is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien Too by Johnny Sun. I don't have it on me because I've actually lent it to Julia. I already talked about this book. I kind of did like a ASMR <laughs> review of the book that I recorded at like 1 a.m. or something like that, which you can see in my reading vlog video. My housemate is currently asleep on the other side of that bunting. Um, just to kind of like summarize what I said about life, death, art, it's got really dark humor, but it just gives you this wonderful sense of hope and anti loneliness. If that's a term, I'm coining that term. It's just full of beautiful moments. Really, really love it. This is another poetry book, but I also managed to read Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vaughan. This book punches you in the damn throat. It's, it's just so gorgeous and breathtaking. And he's so incredible with words and particularly with form. How he shapes the poems on the page is kind of just brilliant. There's such a wonderful intensity to his poems as well. You catch yourself like holding your breath as you're reading through the poems. Maybe I'm just a really dramatic reader, but like that's how I felt, okay? There's one poem that really, really sticks with me. Um, it's called The Seventh Circle of Earth and it was written after Ocean heard that um, a gay couple, Michael Humphrey and Clayton Capshaw, they were murdered by immolation in their home in Tallis, Texas in 2011. Uh, for those who don't know, immolation is burned alive. And it's just such a haunting, haunting poem. I don't know how well I was picking up on the camera, but it's this poem. And you're just met with a blank page with a couple numbers here and there. And the entire poem is written in the footnotes. It's two pages, it carries on to the next page. The form is really making you think more about the poem, what the poem is trying to say. For me, it makes me think of like getting a newspaper article, but you're really getting the real story, the human story and the footnotes and the margins. And with oppressed communities of people, their voice is literally marginalized. So in this poem, um, it's told from the perspective of uh, one of the murdered men and like their voices are literally marginalized. They're literally, not in the main body of the text. It's set into footnotes. When you hear such awful, awful news like that, like how do you actually write about it? How do you report on something like that? How do you make that into a newspaper article? I'll just read like a small section, bearing in mind that this is supposed to be from the voice of a gay man and I am not, um, but I'll share with you like a little bit of the words. As if my finger tracing your collarbone behind closed doors was enough to erase myself. To forget we built this house knowing it won't last. How does anyone stop regret without cutting off his hands? 
Another torch streams through the kitchen window, another errant dove. It's funny. I always knew I'd be warmest beside my man, but don't laugh. Understand me when I say I burn best when crowned with your scent. That earth sweat and old spice I seek out each night the days refuse me. Our faces blackening in the photographs along the wall. It's stunning. It's really stunning. Please find yourself a copy from your library, from the poetry library in the South Bank. Order it, get your hands on it. It's it's beautiful. Another book I read during the readathon is Colorless Tusukuri Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage, and it's by Haruki Murakami. This was weird. This was a weird book. I don't know if I enjoyed it. It talked way, way more about erections than I ever thought or expected. It's about a group of five very, very close friends, been friends since childhood, and then one day four of them just cut uh, Tuzukuri just out of their lives, tell them never speak with them again. They just shut him out and he's kind of left feeling very depressed and kind of really reeling from this sudden rejection and he doesn't know why they rejected him and then 16 years later his girlfriend kind of like convinces him to visit them again and kind of investigate and find out why they cut him off maybe i'm just not familiar with murakami style but like i just wasn't that into it i didn't really care about the characters i'm gonna try and talk about this without giving any spoilers but something i had big that just did not sit right with me but that they kept going on and on and on about how one of the girls just you know she just got old and then she you know she just wasn't so beautiful anymore and then therefore she lost her spark and then so of course you know she got depressed because you know she wasn't so perky and young and beautiful anymore so obviously you know she's just like a lesser human being now and i was just like yikes but one thing I did kind of like connect with was how after so many years all like the friends you made in high school they you kind of start growing apart and drifting apart and like in the book like the characters are like in their mid 30s like I'm not I'm not nearing 30 but one day I will be and like I'm kind of like mid 20s now and I'm already kind of going through that stage where a lot of friends aren't kind of friends anymore not because of anything just you drifted apart there's a lot of like people i went to school with that i just don't talk to some of them i miss most of them really don't miss you if you're watching this don't care <laughs> there'll be times in my life where people who i have not seen for decades on decades on decades will appear and we'll meet up and I don't know what that'll be like. I'd imagine in some cases it'll be really great. You know, you get to, you know, reconnect as adults and not as children. So you're more mature. You can actually like talk about things and not about how much you hate maths. So you get to reconnect with someone from your past, but also you're making a new friend at the same time. Or it could be very much like we have nothing in common except our past. So there's a lot of like bittersweetness in moments like that. You know you're getting old when you start thinking like that. Also by the way I mentioned in my TBR that I was going to try and read 1Q84 also by Murakami. I tried to reserve a copy from the library but they have utterly done goofed and the book never turned up and they're no longer answering my emails so you know what Dave? Screw you. You let me down. Also I want my 60p reservation fee back. The next book should have been A Thousand Beginnings and Endings by Ellen O. This was the group book. I didn't read it. I'm sorry, Cindy. Just didn't, just didn't have time. Wasn't in my library, wasn't in any library. I just, I just saw, I'll read it someday. <laughs> I also read To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Hahn. This copy was very kindly lent to me by Julia. <laughs> the problem is the film is one of my favorite films. I adore it. I did try and like put 
that kind of out of my mind when reading this book but I just don't like the book I don't think I would have liked the book regardless of whether or not I'd seen the film like I don't want to compare it to the film but I'm gonna compare it to the film the book's really missing a lot of that beautiful natural dialogue that comes up and it's missing a lot of the playful fun quirky moments as well and it's those moments in the film that really make me love it because it really it like hits you in the feels man it hits you <laughs> and the book just feels everything is a lot like stiffer and like kind of more serious than it needs to be i'd say laura jean bless you but in the book she's just she's carrying a lot more weight so in the film is kind of like sassier more confident more kind of like sure of herself like she's still shy and quiet and like whatnot but she's just kind of like settled in her shyness and quietness if that makes sense laura jean in the book is much more barbed and harsher i feel and she's also oh, god bless you but Laura Jean, you're such a square in the book. She's very stiff and very, very anti-fun. <laughs> like in the film, yeah, she doesn't want to go. I just want to go to parties. She's like staying at home and stuff. But she's still kind of like, you see her having a good time outside of her house. Whereas in the book, Laura Jean just really does not want to go outside at all. She just want to stay in her home and like bake loads of cookies and stuff which is fine but also please go leave the house this is all my opinion by the way so like if you love the book and hate the film or like whatever like it's calm your your feelings are still valid your opinions are still valid this is just me and my brain talking at you i do like how the book actually goes into depth about sisterhood after your mother dies because margot really was the big sister role and it talks about the pressure she felt and how she handles like being so relied on and then leaving and then coming back and like they kind of don't quote unquote need her anymore and how she deals with that and it goes a lot more into sisterhood because kitty is actually a lot younger in the book than she is in the movie so laura jean actually has to do more like caring for her something i found really interesting was that how much all the family members like split the housework and how focused they are on maintaining and running a household and obviously that's not like the most interesting thing to cover in a film but it's quite accurate to the kind of like what happens when you're missing one parent everyone has to pick up on the work and just help take care of each other and like run a happy house and a happy home i found the book less fun i'm sorry i was quite disappointed because i love the film so much but you know what it's fine it's just my opinion however i don't regret reading it because it's really interesting to see this is a very like nerdy like i'm a writer so i study writing kind of thing but it's really interesting to see how the process of adapting this book happened what they've done is they've essentially taken like key moments or moments that kind of stuck with the writers and they've just kind of pulled all of that out of the book and they've written almost a new narrative around that instead of doing like a page by page adaptation i know some people are like oh you've got to stick really really faithfully to the book like nah you don't like it's an adaptation it's becoming a completely different medium and storytelling form you don't need to have page by page adaptations i'm not that huge on like movies having to be faithful don't care it's two different forms of storytelling they're allowed to be separate from the source material but that's a whole other conversation just to quickly like plug another one of my videos because i'm trying to get good at this like youtube thing i did a laura jean inspired makeup look which you can see in the cards here still don't know where to point it's there somewhere it'll be in the description as well the last book i read as part of this readathon is watching the tree by adeline yen ma i actually made loads of notes whilst reading this and i should have been able to come to you with a great book review but all the notes have been lost and i don't know what happened so this is what i remember <laughs> of reading the book you can tell this is a highly 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 personal book for adeline she wrote this book kind of after and for her grandfather so Adeline's had like a really awful abusive childhood like her 
her story is just kind of mental. She's had a really, really hard life. And throughout her childhood, her grandfather was there and he was loving and he was just this wonderful man in the midst of all this horror that was her childhood. It's non-fiction. Adeline's kind of exploring and sharing like Chinese philosophies and histories and traditions and she's sharing a lot of her personal stories in between as well. This book was hard for me to read, not in terms of technicality, like it's very very well written. It was just hard for me to read but very important for me to read because I've spent a lot of my life trying to figure out why I was raised in the environment that I was. Um, not trying to like justify like all the crazy that happened, but kind of trying to understand why, why did things happen that they did. I don't want to talk anymore about that. Also like I don't really have anyone in my life to kind of teach me Chinese heritage, Chinese traditions and philosophies and um, so it's really really wonderful that this book exists. So like Adeline writing this really is kind of a gift to young Chinese people like me and it's super important that this book was written and it can't have been easy at all so thank you Adeline. I will say one thing that kind of irked me <laughs> irked while I was reading this was um, she talks about um, I Ching. Um, how do I how do I describe I Ching? Jeez, that's complex. It's essentially a book of wisdom as well as a book of uh, divination. So you have this book and you have like sticks and you kind of lay out on the floor and you kind of use it to like ask questions and kind of like it's really hard. It's like part religious text, part fortune telling, part guidance there's a lot of like hexagrams and stuff like I've never done I Ching myself I've never like seen it in real life but I know it's like a quite an important old Chinese tradition thing so I'd love to like actually learn more about it at some point but she had her grandfather's copy of the I Ching that he she says like he basically regarded this book as her bible and then her ex they had like a really tumultuous for like seven year long relationship he was this white guy who just was older and just wasn't very nice to her and at the end of the relationship he asked her like oh can you give me something as symbolic of our relationship together which i think is a shitty thing to be asking your ex by the way and she she sends him the the book she sends him her grandfather's i ching and I don't think she ever tells him how much it means to her. It was one of her grandfather's most precious possessions and like white men have taken in enough treasures from our countries, you know, because colonialism. So like, why are you just like gifting it to them? But you know what? It's her choice in her life. I just, it hurt me, it did, it did. But still, thank you for sharing your stories and everything. I apologize. But that did get under my skin but also thank you for sharing your book and stories i'm a terrible human being and that is all the books that i read during the asian readathon stop doing this with your arms so asian readathon and the month of may may be over but you can read asian books all year round if you have any recommendations please let me know because i really do want to keep reading books by asian authors let me know if you enjoyed this video because i've actually been absent from booktube for like a year plus before making these Asian readathon videos. It was quite fun to do, you know, doing the reading vlogs and doing like the classic like to be read videos and wrap up videos. So if you like this kind of thing, let me know. Otherwise, I don't know how I feel about booktube still. We'll probably talk more about that another time. So if you have questions about that, please let me know. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.